there everyone, Texas Deacon here. Welcome to 2014. It's going to be a wonderful year, I hope. Hope you had a wonderful day in the Lord, and if you did not, it's your fault, and you can change that. Only you can change it. This lesson is going to be political. Now, I will be more political in the upcoming year. However, I am not moving away from my first love. You're going to get a lot of scripture. The title of this lesson is Financial Collapse of America. I have this brochure. It is from The Art of Family Living out of Colorado Springs. Post office box 33,000. Eight oh, the zip code is 80933-3000 if anyone wants to contact them. And I'm going to share this brochure with you. Called The Crash is the name of it. Time for good, the economy had never seemed stronger or more secure. Millions of Americans dedicated themselves wholeheartedly to the pursuit of greater and greater wealth, to the unrestrained self-indulgence. A few voices sounded the warning that the nation's new wealth rested on an unstable foundation, a crumbling pillar of debt, but these warnings were drowned out in the grab for more, more, and more. Then, one Thursday in 1929, years of financial irresponsibility finally caught up with our country. The mountain of debt upon which our country was precariously balanced suddenly came crashing down. Like a drunk walking up on Monday after a weekend's binge, America had a hangover, a decade-long hangover called the Great Depression. Today, the United States faces the prospect of an even more devastating economic collapse than the Great Depression, triggered by a level of government debt unimaginable even in the wildest days of the Roaring Twenties. And let's see. Okay, what's ahead in 2014? This is seven predictions for the new year. It starts out, there's a vast difference between a prophecy and a prediction. A prophecy demands complete accuracy with a penalty of death if you turn out to be wrong. That's in Deuteronomy 18.20. With this in mind, let me offer some predictions about what's ahead for the new year, and this is by a John Nieder, N-E-I-D-E-R. Number one, the character question will continue to plague Barack Obama and his administration, but few Americans will really seem to care, demonstrating the depth of our country's moral decline. Health care will dominate the news, and a growing federal deficit will largely be ignored. Most Americans will continue to look to the government as their provider, while a prudent minority will prepare for economic chaos and possibly anarchy. The Arab-Israeli peace effort will not succeed, paving the way for an eventual intervention of a charismatic politician coming out of the unified Europe. That's in Daniel 9, 27. The true church in America will experience increased persecution as politically correct journalists and politicians label believers as dangerous. A two-tiered church will start to become evident. Professing Christians who do not really know the Savior, will be courted and embraced political correctness leaders, while true believers will begin to understand 
what the first century church was like. Next, the Christian school and homeschool movement will accelerate and more and more parents find out what's really happening in America's public schools. And the last one, number seven, is I can only accept it to be correct. I have no way of knowing. A growing number of secular psychologists, sociologists, and even politicians will see the family unit as the only hope left for our country and the world. I wish that was true. I just sometimes have my doubts. Let's see what else this has to say. This is going to be of great interest. Oh, yeah. Something has to give, and soon, says former Attorney General Ed Meese. U.S. Congressman William Dannemeyer, Senator Trent Lott, Christian Financial Advisor Larry Burkett, International Executive Chuck Mesler, and other experts. Their combined testimony and video in the crash, this is a video that they're selling, is both convincing and shocking. When government insiders, respected conservative economists, and credible biblical students all sound the same alarm, it's time for the rest of us to sit up and take heed, and then take action. You know, that's a problem with too many Christians. They hear the word, but they don't live the word. And that's in their daily lives. <clears throat> in watching the crash, I was reminded of a proverb from Israel's wisdom literature. A, and this is a proverb. Proverb 22, 3 in Proverbs. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge. But the simple keep going and suffer for it. The warning sounded in the crash is backed by reliable testimony from thoughtful men who see danger ahead and back their claims with solid evidence. If we stay on our present course, the United States will be bankrupt soon, perhaps as early as 2015 certainly by the year 2020. Washington is in debt to the tune of over $4 trillion and our interest payments are now over a billion dollars per day. That's right, each and every day over $1 billion must be spent just to pay the interest on the government debt. At this rate, within a few short years, every dollar collected in taxes will be needed to pay interest on the debt, and the United States will be bankrupt. Can this disaster be avoided? It is possible to bring our government spending back in line uh, with its income. Absolutely, it, it is. But with these changes, but well, will the changes be made? Don't count on Barack Obama, who campaigned on a platform of deficit reduction, but he's actually done nothing to reduce the federal deficit. Don't be fooled by rhetoric, half-hearted step to limit the rate at which we go into additional debt. It's far cry from tightening the belt and starting to pay off what we already owe. Why won't our elected leaders take meaningful steps in, faith and in the face of these obvious dangers? I'm afraid almost of them are more concerned about re-election than about the country. Our elected officials are simply unwilling to jeopardize their political careers by eliminating wasteful programs that buy their votes from the beneficiaries of the government's gravy train. Says a lot. And here is something, uh, this is, uh, we face the possibility of a depression 
that can make the depression of 1929 look like a mild recession. And that was Commodity Trade, Trader, Trade, Commodity Trading Advisor Mark Ritchie. Congress today is incapable of exercising the dis discipline to rein in the runaway monster of government debt. Here's another line. Congress's financial irresponsibility reflects America's questioning of fixed standards and moral absolutes. Now on the back it talks a little about what's going on in our schools. In schools across America, time is being taken away from reading, writing, and arithmetic in order to give our children value clarification, self-esteem exercises, outcome-based education, drug education, sex education courses. These programs offer the rosy promise of reducing our children's experimentation with dangerous practices and de deviant behavior. Typical drug and sex education courses are actually increasing young students' drug use and sexual activity. I remember a time in this country, it must have been in the 70s, when the drug and uh, sex education became prevalent in the schools. If you ask a 10, 12 year old what they learned about drugs, they say, oh, they taught us about them at school. They didn't know about them until they were taught. As far as financial collapse, around 1968, I was traveling across country by myself at night, had the radio on, so help stay awake. I listened to a man talk about the collapse of the social security system. He said mathematically impossible for it to stand. Now that was before the government took all the accumulated billions that was in the social security system and put it into the uh, general fund and paid the social security out of the general fund. But it's still with us. It's got to be more shaky than ever now. Also, in 19, around 1977, I worked with a man that we used to listen to, we worked nights then, used to listen to talk radio, and it sounded so gloom and doom, I feel sorry for the man. He went and took $10,000 out of his savings account and put it in a safe deposit box. So he'd have some money if our economy collapsed. He was like so many people that think our money has value and nothing but a piece of paper. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. And I don't think anybody else really does. I believe in, in the collapse. It will happen. It can't last forever. And I know what he talks about in here. The same thing. This is proof right here. But I got a little confession. What I read to you was not 100% accurate. This paper I'm reading was not printed in 2013. It was printed in 1993. And if I can lean forward enough to show you the, the date on it. And when you heard the name Barack Obama, it should have said Bill Clinton. And back here where I said, uh, next page, the economic collapse could happen in 2015. It actually said, if we stay on our present course, the U.S. will be bankrupt soon. Perhaps as early as 1995, certainly by the year 2000. People then thought we were ready just to collapse. They were wrong. However, we cannot keep going in debt. We cannot 
keep destroying our morals. We cannot put more and more people on the government take. We're turning into a socialist, communist country. And what scares me is, I believe we're too far to turn around. Because first of all, it's going to take people and a government that wants to do it. And that's not going to happen. See, there are people out there that want to destroy our economy. And want to destroy it, then they rebuild it the one they want, which will be socialist or communist. There's not a nickel for the difference between a socialist and a communist. Be in prayer that I'm wrong, that a whole bunch of other people that believe the same thing I do are also wrong. This country I love so much, the thought of seeing it just die and be a page in a history book someday really bothered me. I hope it bothers you enough to do something. So until next time, may God continue to bless and forgive the United States of America. May God continue to bless the Republic of Texas. And may God continue to bless you and yours.